Money Deli presented by Able Auctions. If you have assets, inventory, equipment, you need to sell. Email sales at ableauctions.ca. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Did you have a text you wanted to uh, read? Uh, love that you guys are back. Longtime sports page Canucks fan. Need Donnie to do the Leafs announcer. Toronto goal scored by mm. Rob, who's a Canucks fan transplanted from Vancouver Island to Slave Lake, Alberta. You don't know where Slave Lake is. I do. Or do you know? Yeah, it's in Alberta. It just, I've heard it. Uh, I, I don't know I, the I, exact it, location. Northern Alberta. It is right on the, the tip of Edmonton. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there in that Edmonton area. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. It's okay. a good place. Uh, John Shannon. Uh, John, yeah. I was I was going to do the Leafs announcer. I was, yeah, do uh, it. Do uh, it. Do no, it. I, I, no uh, Paul Morris we're talking about. But yeah. we'll, we'll save that for later. Maple Leaf Gardens. We've got to get to uh, uh, John. John Shannon joining us now. NHL uh, analyst bills himself as a hockey storyteller on his Twitter account. John, thanks so much for doing this. How are you, sir? Boys, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You know, Slave Lake. I, and I think I, I think you should I think you should do Paul Morris right now. I, yes. I mean, I'm not. I'm, you know, I think that's important. Yes. On a goal score by number 10, John Shannon. Assist number four, Mike Pellick. And number two, Ian Turnbull. How's that? <laughs> Pretty good. I think Paul would be thrilled. Would Paul Morris Paul get, would be thrilled. Would Paul, it, it sounds like you know him. Uh, of course you did. You you were so many games at Maple Leaf Gardens. But um, would Paul Morris get a job today? I love his style, but now it's the big, booming yeah. voice that yeah. we hear. Yeah. Would, yeah, he, would, would he get hired today, John? No. No, and it's really a shame that mm-hmm. he wouldn't uh, get a chance. Uh, th- th- that was at a time and a a place where, you know. Uh, by the way, Paul's real job at Maple Leaf Gardens was he was the he was the house electrician. Really. Uh, and the, and the public address announcing was just oh yeah. By the way, you're doing the public address announcing. <laughs> no. Sounds like Harold <laughs> Ballard. I've never Absolutely. heard that story. Sounds Absolutely. like Harold Ballard. They yeah. saved money. Well, the Herald was famous for that. And yeah. do you remember that famous Dominion score clock that used to be yeah. at Set of Rice mm-hmm. in Toronto? Mm-hmm. Pa- Paul built that. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. He, he's oh, yeah. an electrician. Oh, yeah. That makes yeah, sense. He was, he was he was yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, my by gosh. By the way, that, Rick, not to create, Lester Slave Lake is a long way from Edmonton, okay? Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> it's about a four-hour drive. Hold it a second. We got the <laughs> wrong <laughs> Slave Lake then. Uh... Yeah, there's two of them in Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> Let me Google it. Let me Google it. It's like Springfield. There's a I million of them. I thought there were mountains in Saskatchewan, so here we go. <laughs> oh, there is. A man-made one. Well, I'll get it. I'll yeah, get that's it. right. Um, Mount Blackstrap. That that's was Mount what Blackstrap it's called. In Saskatoon. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's what it's right. called. Man-made. Yeah. Okay, John, so many years uh, at Hockey Night in Canada, behind the scenes, other broadcasts. But I just want to get, because, because you work, and we'll get to trades and the deadline and all that in a second but because you worked behind the scenes for so long i just want to get you your opinion of what we've seen during these covid nhl broadcasts and uh how they're implementing uh, a fake audio all of that i think they've done a better and better job as the uh, days go by uh oh i don't even notice yeah. now the fact that uh they're pumping audio in uh, you, you know, certain teams tried to do it, you know, rather sterilely. Um, Montreal being one of them, and then Shea Weber got mad and said, "Hey guys, we need some noise." Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I think overall, those people that do game presentation uh, with people in the building have now learned to to manufacture something that it isn't fake, even though it is fake, but but really actually helps. Uh, some level of the environment. I do like, I must admit, I do like hearing a bit more of the ice. I do like hearing yeah. the players yeah. every once in a while, but I, I don't mind the, the fake crowd. I don't mind the, you know, the, you know, the, the go Oilers go chance or go flames, go chance uh, or defense, whatever. I, I think it's, I think it's worked out. Okay. And I think it helps the players to some extent. Um, moving on, given the COVID situation and um, a reduction in revenues, what do, what do you expect? And we've already seen a couple of trades this week, but what do you expect before tra- uh, Monday's trade deadline? Lots of activity or inactivity? Uh, I think it will be over overall slow compared mm-hmm. to other years. Uh, I think teams, there are some teams that have either done their, their deals now. I mean, I think the Islanders are done now. I think Montreal is done now. Um, and I, I also think that there's pressure from ownership to not put any more money on the books at times. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, I mean, the, you look at the deal that Florida did today, getting rid of Brett Connolly. Uh, what they're, you know, there's no guarantee that they're freeing up space to go get someone else. Uh, the, what they also might be doing is getting a message from ownership there to say, hey, listen, we're going to lose $50 million. Could we try not to make it 51? And uh, and that's that that's a real challenge for for the managers in, in this year because you 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 get this close and your team's really good, you you have the urge to want to go out and do something, um, but there's a, a ton more pressures this year because there's nobody in the building. Islanders yesterday get Palmieri, uh, Palmieri and Zajac from uh, New Jersey for draft uh, picks and prospects. Does that deal make sense to you, uh, John Shannon, for Lou Lamorello? It does. It also speaks to where I think Lou feels his team is to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, you, you know, when you when you look at where the Islanders are and how good the Islanders have become, uh, they've settled down in goal. Their defense is very very good, and now they're now they're deep. Uh, they've got three and maybe four lines that are going to be absolutely uh, tremendous. Uh, down the stretch they to me the islanders have put themselves when you when you go across the board and look at the different divisions uh, i think it's pretty easy to pick one two teams that are are going to get to the final four and i think the islanders now are at the top of the list out of that eastern division john let's talk about the canucks uh, deadline they're talking to pearson what do you do with sutter what do you do with adler Uh, what's your feel in vancouver do you think they can get something done or not well, I mean, is there a chance that somebody could be be behind two eight balls? Because uh, Jim might be <laughs> Jim might yes. be behind two eight balls in this one. When you consider yeah. that his team will not have played a game in a long time when the deadline comes, um, if you're a team, are you fear? You know, where is the where does the health and safety aspect come for trading with the Canucks? Uh, you know, so there's going to have to be a ton of investigation. To a guy like uh, Brandon Sutter, who's who's on the COVID list, how seriously ill is he? The teams will have will, will certainly know more than than the three of us. Um, but it beco- it becomes one that you say, is it worth the risk? I I think that's a big part of it. Is it worth the risk to do anything with the Canucks with with COVID? And and will he be able to travel? How soon he will he be able to travel? How soon will he be off the COVID list? And I think there's three or four guys on that on that list that. That, uh, that you have to ask that question about. Well, speaking of risk, uh, the Canucks have uh, not signed their coach, uh, uh, John. He, he could walk in a few weeks if they don't get going and make him an offer. What are you hearing on the Travis Green contract front? I, I, you know what? I, I'm a huge Travis fan. I, I think he's one of the, the best, I'd like to say young, but let's say middle-aged coaches in the National Hockey League. Um, and I, I think something gets done. I really do. Um, you know, what, what, what the team has done uh, on so many levels is, I think, frustrated a lot of people outside the organization. I only hope that people inside the organization, maybe not player agents, but inside the organization, understand the, the cash uh, poor issue that goes on with every NHL team right now. And that, that that's been communicated with Travis and he ends up signing a deal. Otherwise, he's going to come back and haunt the Vancouver Canucks as one of the best coaches in the NHL for a decade because that's how good he is. That wouldn't happen to the Canucks now, John. Come on. Uh, <laughs> do you have confidence they're going to – the NHL does, but what else are they going to say? Do you have confidence, John, that they're going to complete their 56-game schedule? I do. Uh, I, I do. I, I actually, let me put an asterisk beside that, okay. Donnie. Um I, I I fully expect, first of all, the Canadian division will end up going to the 14th or 15th, maybe even the 16th to finish. Of May. Uh, yeah. Of May, yes. Um, the question becomes is what kind of juggling are they doing in the office right now, the schedule maker? What is he doing uh, to try to make sure that Vancouver um, uh, plays its games or, or rejigs the schedule? To say, okay, at the end of at, in that window from the 10th of May to the 16th of May, Vancouver, you're going to play Calgary. Vancouver, you're going to play Ottawa, and then make the decision: is it worth playing those games because those teams are out of the playoffs? I think they're. Go- I actually think they're going to try to play the games that have playoff 
uh, meaning uh, as soon as possible. And and that that's a challenge. I mean, it, it's a real challenge because teams like Edmonton have finished playing the Maple Leafs. Uh, they will finish playing Ottawa tonight. So all of a sudden, you know, Edmonton's in the in a boat of of saying, well, we we you know we can't go back to to Toronto. They they can go back to Montreal. They still have three games against Canadians. Uh, so I I think that there's we may not recognize the schedule next week um, when when there are some more adaptations to it. Okay, before I let you go, uh, Spadina, uh, down the waterfront, uh, down Young Street, Bloor Street, where's the parade going to be, the Leafs parade? Do we know, uh, John, at this point? <laughs> see, see here, here's, the, you know, you know, when I live in Toronto, I tell everybody uh, that I'm living in exile. When I'm in the, in the West, I'm telling everybody I'm living in exile. I'm born, <laughs> and, born and raised down Highway 97 in the Okanagan yes, Valley. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I may have worked for the Maple Leafs, I may live in Toronto, but I'm a British Columbian, so I, you know, they can put the parade anywhere they want, but it's not going to be this year anyway. So don't worry about oh, it. Oh, well, why Ooh. do you say that? I don't think they're good enough. Not according to Ontario. Uh, not according to Ontario. <laughs> oh, yes, but, <laughs> but come on, guys. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I I live in the center of the universe, but that doesn't mean everybody in the center of the universe thinks it's the center of the universe. Hey, John. <laughs> there you go, John. Quickly. Uh, you are right about Slave Lake, but I was thinking about Westlock because I I, and, oh. and I was thinking oh, of Westlock. A lot, a lot of people get oh. those two hey. mixed up. No, and John, because <laughs> I've been to the radio station of Westlock, and I've been to the one in Slave Lake. I got them mixed up. Westlock is outside of Edmonton. Uh, Slave right. Lake, Slave Lake is way up. Yeah, you're right. Well, you, what, so where, now, were you dropping off tapes for jobs, or is it, what were you doing? Uh, no, I, <laughs> yes, old school. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. Oh, sure. beautiful. Yeah. I drove, yeah. Hey, I drove across the country doing that at about 40 radio stations in 1978. <laughs> John, I dropped the tape off in Kelowna uh, and wearing a three-piece wool suit. That's it. That's it. In 40-degree <laughs> weather uh, in July. I dropped one off. In oh, I didn't get the hey, job, by the way. I dropped one off, Johnny, in uh, trail. Took the bus <laughs> to trail. <laughs> dropped well, the tape I, off in, yeah, in trail. Okay, I forget. Wait, I can. I think I can beat you. I okay. got offered the sports director's job at the radio station, the Big R in in Revelstoke, and wow. Salmon Arm. I got offered the sports director's job for eight thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know about that. I know about that salary, buddy. Yeah. I know about that and, one. And, and, and I and I turned it down because Hockey Night in Canada offered me seventeen thousand dollars. Wow, so wow. <laughs> it was kind of a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, I was a sports director once at CKGY in Red Deer. Yep. And I was the sports director because I was the only person in the sports department. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's it. It wasn't a huge be, station. Yeah, yeah. I used to be sports director, John, and there was nobody else, just yeah, like Donnie in the sports department. And my, the well, business card, the whole bit. Oh, uh, you're talking to the president of Shannon Sports Media, so it's okay. There yeah. you go. The there good you old go. days. The good old days, Johnny, the good old days. <laughs> Employees won. All right. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, John. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Have a great day and a great weekend, boys.